Hi, in this video, Affinity Publisher, the table of contents in detail, I'd like to go into the help file detail for Affinity Publisher, for table of contents, and just work through it to clarify it. So it's just the facts, ma'am. If you remember the old TV series Naked City, am I showing my age? Probably. So, I've set up a document here, just a B format um, book body, and it's not a good idea to put table of contents in a master page. They change too much, and usually you only need one table of contents in most in most um, fiction books. In any case, if you're dealing with non-fiction, um, photography, archaeology, anything like that, you're probably going to need more than one, but usually not really. But any case, let's look at our example to start with. I'm going to use a standard B format layout with 12 pages. One master page and 12 body pages. You don't need to fuss about the creation of this. This is just a B format because I have a prepared book, one that I've written somewhere else and already published. The page numbering shown here are the physical pages. They're not necessarily the story pages. And that's something to be careful of. Don't get confused. Those page numbers on the left won't necessarily show up as the page numbers in your story. And as I say here, page 1 of your story may actually start on physical page 5. Now, always on the right hand side, recto page. Your table of contents always appears on the right hand side. Pick up nearly any book in a library and have a look. If you've got books on your shelves, and you should have, have a look. Nearly always start on the right. I have, I've only seen badly formatted ones on the left. Usually the front matter in a book does not have page numbers, so you can set up sections for that, and we'll look at that in a moment. And I've done a complete video on sections and page numbering previously, so you might go back and have a look through that. Now, looking at the table of contents, Affinity Publisher provides the ability to easily insert and manage a table of contents for your document. And you can see the one I've got shown there. Now, that's already in the document that I placed into this publisher file. I'd already prepared that because it was done in Word and sent to the publishers. And I'll delete it for the purpose of this exercise. That's not the one I've created here. A table of contents searches the document for text in specified text styles, typically headings, and reproduces that text in a list, normally annotated with page numbers. The document can have as many table of contents, TOCs, as required but typically a single TOC at the start of your publication is used. Note, if you're creating an EPUB, you don't need a table of contents. They're irrelevant because depending on the size of your reader, the page locations change, which is not a lot of use for a table of contents. Now, I just want to explain that. Second part, a table of contents searches the document for text in specified text styles, typically headings. Now remember that, because it doesn't look for page numbers, it looks for text styles that you've told it to look for. Now, if you create a document with sufficient pages containing TOC qualifying headings, you'll need to plan out the number of TOC pages to accommodate the automatically generated TOC, or TOC. If the number of headings necessitates a two-page spread, or even three, you'll need to make room for this at the start of the publication. If the number of TOC entries may overflow the frame, link the text frames between pages one and two of your TOC. Otherwise, manually flow the overflowing text to the second page's frame. So it's quite easy for a TOC to go over more than one page. If you're using multiple TOCs, 
When a TOC has been inserted for the document, secondary, section-specific TOCs can be created. For each example, TOCs for each chapter of a book. I don't know quite why you'd want to do that, but it can be done. You can generate and present a secondary TOC within a selected section, including all subsequent qualifying headings, or just those within the section. Now, to create textiles only, we'll get into this in a moment. Talk, talk textiles only show in the textiles panel when a text frame containing a generated talk is selected. By default, new talks should have their own styles. So if you've got textiles panels open, Unless you've got a top frame selected, you won't see the table of contents style showing. Leader tabs can be added as tab stops as part of the style used by the table of contents. The default top style can be found in the textiles panel. There's a panel usually on the right hand side, remember, with characters and layers and all that. Textiles is over there. Clicking on the style and selecting Edit, that's the three buttons, three dots, will display the Edit Textile dialog, from which you can adjust the tab stops in the tab stop section. By default, there will be a single tab stop at position zero, measured from the right edge. The third menu along sets the leader, and by default there is none. Click on the menu and select Tab Stop Leader Character or click the three dots, the More, at the end of the row to display a pop-up panel that allows you to pick which character is used for the leader and you can select your own character. Much more on this action is to follow in subsequent slides. I know that sounds like double dutch and it's even difficult to read, so don't worry too much about it. Focus on it and we'll move on. Now, to generate a table of contents. The table of contents panel, usually found in the view menu under Studio, followed by table of contents, will open automatically, allowing you to adjust the format of your TOC. Now, it says there, alternatively, a table of contents can be inserted directly from the table of contents panel. And that goes through there. And I won't read that out because we're coming to that in a moment. Your TOC is populated with text that has the style name assigned to it in your document. You can check or uncheck these style name entries at the bottom of the panel to include or exclude that style's text. Let's see what happens when you click Insert a Table of Contents. And you can see in the diagram there, in the image, I've got a text frame selected. The little vertical cursor is there in the top left hand side of that text frame and I'm about to insert a table of contents. Once inserted it will show the following. So go through your document and set, in this case, all chapter headings to type heading 1. That's the entry type for chapter headings that I selected. Now when you first insert a table of contents, if you don't have your chapter headings set as type st or style name heading 1 and heading 2 I've got there so you might have some heading 2 ones a heading with a subheading normally you won't have them selected to start with but you might have if you're very efficient so with no styles selected the table of contents is inserted and it says no table of contents entries found don't be confused like by that it's just telling you that you haven't got any chapter entries set up yet, or section entries, or whatever you want to call them. We're dealing with chapters here. Okay, so you've got your table of contents entered, and it's waiting for you to do the rest. Let's have a look. With the table of contents selected from the table of contents panel, click Update. Click Update All Table 
of contents to update every table of contents in your document or update table of contents, a single one. If you export without having done an update, you'll be prompted to update the table of contents on export, even if all TOCs are up to date. Now you can see there I've got chapters 1, 2, 3 and 4. From the previous slide where I said go through your chapters now and highlight your chapter headings or what you're going to have as chapter headings as heading 1 or heading 2. Then when you update your table of contents they'll show up as they do on the right. And you can see there's a single little dot just before the 7, 21, 3 and 45. We'll come to that later because you can change that. You can, you can actually make that nearly anything you like. We won't get too fancy. To add leader lines between items and page numbers. Select the text frame that contains the table of contents. On the table of contents panel, view studio table of contents, verify the name of the selected doc. On the text styles panel, double click the entry style that matches the TOC's name. For example, TOC1 entry. That's the one I selected here. Select tab stops on the left of the edit text style dialog. I'll show you all this in a moment. To the right, click the predefined tab stops more button and next to the leader, select the tab stop leader character tab stop leader underline or tab stop leader strikeout setting and optionally if you choose the leader character setting you can type in the glyph you want to repeat along the leader line in the character field. Click OK. OK here we are in, a, in a much more detail. To add leader lines between items and page numbers so on the left you've got chapter 1 on the right you've got 7. Now we want to put things in between that. So I've got TOC1 entry. You'll see entry is repeated there because it says entry entry just to make sure you've got it. Select the, select the text frame that contains the, a TOC. On the table of contents panel, view studio table of con contents, verify the name of the selected table of contents. You can see there TOC style TOC1 colon entry. Let me just make sure you've got the right one. TOC1 at the top and TOC1 entry. You can see heading 1 and heading 2 are still selected in the left hand side there in the, in the column. Text name, a style name. On the text styles panel, remember that's the panel from the right hand side list of panels. It's not in the table of contents drop down that's on the left, it's in the panels on the right. Selected from studio, double click on the entry style that matches the TOC's name. For example, TOC1 entry and you can see I've got a double click there. There's a TOC1 entry heading 1, ignore that, I've called it TOC1 entry entry. So you double click on that one. And you can see over there it comes up with TOC1 entry entry and there's a few options there and under the style heading you've got character font, color and decorations, position, blah blah blah, typography, paragraph and flow. But look under paragraph you've got tab stops. We're going to use that one in a moment. Select tab stops on the left of the editor text style dialog. There you go. You're over there and you're on the tab stops. To the right, click the predefined tab stops more button. The more button symbol. Next to leader, select the tab stop leader character, underline or strike out setting. And optional, if you choose the leader character setting, type in the glyph to repeat. I put on my own dots, so you can't actually see it there because it's highlight tab stop leader underline. But I put three or four dots along there and you'll see in a moment what that results in. 
There we go. If you choose the leader character setting, type the glyph to repeat along the leader line in the character field. So that's what affects that line there. You can see there's still a dot 45 there, because the dot you can get rid of. And uh, I should be able to show you that. In the left hand column there, in the table of contents column you can see, documents, all text frames, talk, entry, and you can see the separator, there's a black dot next to those two right facing arrows. Right? Now, that's possibly snuck in there because I've pressed something and I shouldn't do. That separator is appearing over on the right hand side there, just before 7, 21, 31 and 45. So you can take that out if you like, just delete it. And after a moment, it will not show up in your table of contents anymore. OK, let's have a look at the table of contents panel in detail. This allows you to insert, update and manage any table of contents within your document. From the Table of Contents panel, you can insert a new Table of Contents, update and manage existing TOCs, and create styles for your TOCs. This panel is hidden by default. It can be switched on via View Studio. The following icons, icons are available from the top of the panel. So if you look at the top of that panel, you can see insert. It inserts a generated talk in a text frame at the caret position for your document. So you can virtually insert a table of contents anywhere you like. Update updates a selected talk to include all entries of newly assigned text styles. Or if you want, update all tables of contents with the second circular arrow. You can delete the selected TOC in the TOC pop-up menu and you can rename your TOC. Give a new name for the selected TOC and it will change everything related to that but that's fairly straightforward. Now each table of contents within the document has the following properties. Scope the talk will be generated from all of the documents or only the section containing the talk, and that's where you define the scope. Do you want it the whole document, just this section, or just this text frame? Which would be a bit silly, but there you go. Look in tells you where to look for talk headings. Will be generated from all text frames in the sections or only the frames that are linked in a text flow. So you might have five particular pages linked together and you can create a separate TOC for that. Stop at the next talk. So check to or check that box to automatically stop talk generation if another talk is found. So your talk may start on 1 through 26, you'll have another talk on 27, 27 through 100 for example. But if you update all your tables of contents, you don't want the first one, including the second one. So as soon as it encounters the second talk, it will stop. Now include entries before the talk. Check to include talk entries before the intended talk location. And that is to include preface or introductory information. Your front matter, if you like. That's what includes the, the um, pages with the Roman numerals on them. Now the entries that are included in the table of contents and their appearance are determined by the TOC style. All tables of contents must have a TOC style. These styles can be created, renamed and deleted from the TOC. And they're the following uh, properties. I don't really need to go through that except to say remember that textiles are in the right hand panel. You have a base paragraph style for all the entries and a base character style for all the page numbers in the entries. 
one paragraph style for each source, controlling how these entries will look, and one controlling how page numbers will look. All these styles are auto-generated and can be edited, but not deleted or renamed. Something worth keeping in mind. Now my resulting chapter headings so far very similar to the ones I had in the Word document chapter 1, 7, chapter 2, 21, chapter 3, 31 and chapter 4, 45. You don't need to worry about hyperlinks because this is a printed book and you can bash your finger on the book page as much as you like but it's not going to automatically jump to chapter 4. You have to turn the pages till you get to 45. The delights of a proper book. That's the end of this brief look at the TOC options in Affinity Publisher. At first it looks very simple. And it is. However, you can add to and modify almost all of the entries. Don't let it confuse you. My advice, don't rush it and don't work on your finished publication. You can end up in an awful mess. Create a temporary book add some headings and play with each option until you are completely familiar with what it does. If you go through your book, remember the TOC always starts on the right hand side page, recto page. Your chapter headings should ideally all start on the right hand page, recto. And that's about all there is to it. Once your book is formatted, then update your chapter headings and the proper pages will be reflected. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe. Um, it really helps me, keeps me enthused and allows me to make more videos as I, as I keep going through this for you. Thanks for watching.